We commemorate this evening a tragedy from earlier days, just after the 1916 Rising on the South Strand in Skerries. The executed leaders' families were put up in Skerries in the summer of 1917 for a break. Father Joe Mallon was one of them. This is his story. My brothers and sisters, I am old. 104. I am older than the Irish nation. I have witnessed many things over my long life. Two world wars, the birth of our nation, and the explosion of things in terms of science, technology, medicine, transport. It's a different world from the one of my youth, just as it will be another different world altogether in another hundred years. Sick Transit Gloria Mundi. But it's what happened to me as a toddler and an innocent youngster that defined me. For as a two-year-old sitting on my father Michael's knee the night before they killed him in Kilmainham Jail, that kicked it all off. Agnes Love let young Joseph become a priest, and we fulfilled his dying wish. So here I am in Hong Kong, a Jesuit for over 80 years. And before I was ten, I held my mother's hand at the funeral processions of Michael Collins and Arthur Griffith, and her very own heroes, O'Connor, Brewer and Markovics, who fought so gallantly beside my father in the Rising. And then Mrs. Pierce, Powerick's mam, took me under her wing and gave me an education in St. Endus in Rathfarnham, good enough for the Jesuits to accept me as a postulant. But my abiding memory is not really a memory at all, but a sense of something happening in my company as a four-year-old. One of my very first recollections, colourful and hazy, just like the weather on that far away summer's day in July on the South Strand in Skerries. Barbara, stay away from the water! Come here, help me mount this lovely tricoloured flag to the wind cheater. That's it. Hand me the binding. Now that's a sight for soul Republican eyes. Our nation's flag fluttering in the breeze. Excuse me, miss. Yes. What is it, my good man? I'm afraid you'll have to remove that flag. Remove the flag? Haven't you nothing else to do, officer, in that splendid British uniform of yours? You look... Uh, Dashing! Why don't you leave us alone and let our children play in the sand? Surely you can go and check out a few dog licenses and report them back to your chums in the castle. Either you remove that flag or I will. You're in breach of section... Can't you see you are upsetting the children? Haven't your crowd done enough harm to them? James, Joseph, Barbara, come along and let's take the flag to a place they can't get it. I know. I'll swim over to Shenick Island and place it on the tower for everyone to see. Fluttering gaily in the fine, clear Irish breeze. Seamus, mind Barbara until I get back. Do you see the Martello Tower over there? That's where I'm going to hoist our national flag, away from the grasp of the English tyrant. Here, Joseph, get on to our brother's shoulders. You will be the last to see me and the first to see the flag on the tower from your perch. Bye, folks. See you soon. Muriel, Muriel, you mind where you're going? The tide is coming in fast and strong. Muriel, for God's sake, will you listen to her? And that was the last we saw of her. And apparently I was last to see her from my brother's shoulders. They found her next day further south. She succumbed to the strength of the tide. The tangled weed didn't help either. What followed was the biggest funeral ever seen since O'Donovan Ross's. The one that sparked off the rising that claimed her husband Thomas. Now they are fully orphaned, Barbara and Donna, in the space of a year or so, and all over a trifle, a favour, nothing. I often wonder what the busybody RIC officer thought about it afterwards, or maybe he helped in the frantic search for her. Anyway, 
His report to the castle about the alleged breach of the Royal Flags and Emblems Act would have to be qualified. No further action required. Suspect now deceased.